isn't that nice look at that can you see outside my window right outside at this very moment you can see a lot of apple blossom appearing on my lovely little tree just outside my window yes we are all together again here we go once more it is thursday and this is english addict once more live from the birthplace of the english language which just happens to be england <laughs> Please excuse me. I have a sweet, a little lozenge in my mouth at the moment. This is what I normally chew before I start my live stream. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is still in my mouth, for which I apologise. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope you are happy today. I just <laughs> I just have to finish my little sweet. Excuse me. Just talk amongst yourselves. I will be with you in a moment. Hmm. Oh, that's better. Now my throat suddenly feels invigorated and alive. Thank you very much for joining me once more. Yes, we are here. And <laughs> it is the final day of what has been one of the strangest months I've ever had ever in my life and I've had some strange days in my life but nothing nothing compares to April it has been a really strange month not only that we are almost at the end of the week yes it's Thursday <laughs> So as we are coming towards the end of this month, I thought it would be a nice idea to look at some lovely nature shots, some lovely video clips, some things that I filmed over the years concerning all of the lovely nature around us. So that is what I'm doing today. I will also take you on a tour. Yes, an actual tour of the place in which I live. Something else that many of you have been asking about. Mr. Duncan, can you please show us more of the place in which you live? We will be doing that. Also, something else we're doing today. We are talking about nature, as I mentioned. Today, we are also talking about birds as well. I will be talking about the different types of food that I put out for the birds in my garden. So we will be talking about nature. Also, we will be talking about the food for the birds. Attracting birds to your garden. I know a lot of people around the world now are crazy about nature. So today that is one of the things we are going to be looking at. How to attract those lovely little birds to your garden. How do we do it? That is one of the many things I'm looking at today. We're going for a little tour around the place in which I live. It was something that was filmed a long time ago before all of these crazy days came and made our lives rather difficult. So it 
is something that I think might be interesting to some people maybe maybe not I don't really know maybe you will tell me at the end of today's live stream hello to everyone on the live chat yes we would not have a live stream without you you are the reason why I am here after all hello to Vitas also Zoran Constantine also Partridge Aves Adrian as well you are some of the first ones on today's live chat congratulations to you congratulations and jubilations you are first on today's live stream yes you are well done nice to see so many people here already it is good to see you here on the live chat thank you very much for joining me today <laughs> a lot of people already saying hello hello Mosen also Anna Anna Vittoria hello to you as well nice to see you here also Kaylin hello Kaylin Anna Pika also is here today Hiroko Peter and also Thomas Beatriz hello Mr Duncan happy Thursday <laughs> yes it is Thursday and it definitely is the 30th of April yesterday I got the date wrong I don't know what was going on yesterday I was all over the place I was so disorganized that is a great word a person who is disorganized is a person who can't arrange their own things maybe their their arrangements or their life is chaotic all the time so that is one of the things you could describe a person like me especially yesterday I was very disorganized yesterday and that is probably one of the reasons why I couldn't remember what day it was <laughs> or at least the date today I'm right 100% I am almost sure <laughs> that it is the 30th of April May is just around the corner I suppose the big question is what will May have in store for us April crazy March weird May who knows who knows what will come in May hello to Corrie hello to France hi France nice to see you again as you may have noticed around you where you are in some places certainly things are starting to go back to normal well <laughs> when I say normal I don't mean completely normal I mean that many of the places are now reducing or relaxing their lockdown so things are slowly turning back they are slowly going back to the way they were before however I still think we have a very long way to go a very long way before things actually change completely or at least change back to how they were before I think so hello also to Than Twen hello to you I believe you are watching in Vietnam hi to Vietnam nice to see you all here again also Palmyra Mr Alexei hello Alexei I used to go to school with someone called Alexei I'm not joking I did at school hello Vitas hello Sujin Mr Duncan are you still doing your daily live streams please don't do it <laughs> so Partridge wants me to stop doing my live streams every day what do you think do you want me to continue would you like me to carry on doing my live streams as we go into a new month as the, the month of May 
arrives and begins would you like me to continue doing my live streams every day oh that's a very interesting question so according to partridge i should stop doing my daily live streams what do you think as we come to the end of april do you still want to see me every day or do you think maybe i've done enough <laughs> perhaps you are bored watching me every day standing in front of you talking about the english language maybe maybe not i don't know you see because i'm not there i'm not there hello rosa hello life blogger hello life blogger can i travel anywhere when i grow up you can of course you can i always say the world is your oyster i like that expression the world is your oyster inside everything exists all you have to do is open it and explore it for yourself so the world is your oyster whatever you want to do in your life try it try to do it if you want to travel around the world of course you can there is nothing stopping you when i was a child i never dreamt that i would end up traveling around the world however as i grew older i became more interested and more passionate about certain things so i decided that i did want to travel i wanted to see the world hello mika i think mika is eating mika are you eating you must be aware that there is a certain rule during my live streams if you eat something you must be willing to give some of it to me didn't you know that it's it's a new rule that i just made up a few seconds ago hello also to curry it seems very windy where you are you are right it is a little breezy we had a lot of rain this morning a lot of rain but there at the moment you can see my lovely apple blossom coming out on the tree just outside my window and yes you are right it is very windy today we have a very strong breeze blowing around outside but it is quite nice also we are going to talk about the birds a little bit later on you might like to take a look outside my window right now because there are some birds on the bird feeders and later on we will be talking about all of the food that i give to my birds birds love all kinds of food but one of the types of food that birds really like is bird is food with lots of energy so certain types of food that contain lots of energy birds need to keep feeding all day because their bodies have a very high metabolism which means that they burn or use the energy in their bodies very quickly and that is the reason why the birds have to eat all the time and quite often they will eat things that have a lot of energy such as nuts and also certain types of seed so that is the reason why the birds often eat nuts and seeds because they are a very good source a very good provider of energy we will have another look outside a little bit later on and we will see what is going on with those birds meanwhile we were just looking at the beautiful apple blossom would you like to see something else would you like to take a look outside my front window right now and here is a lovely video clip that i filmed around about 45 minutes ago so i did go into the garden and i decided to do a little bit of filming so here you will see some lovely shots of 
the lilac tree which has now come into full bloom full bloom all of the beautiful flowers have now come out also you will see my magnolia tree and at the end you will see some more apple blossom so let us take a deep breath let us forget about all of our troubles and enjoy a little bit of nature <sighs> goodness oh, even I was getting a little bit swept away by that the music and also the sights that I recorded this morning in my garden a, a lot of things going on outside the window at the moment with the birds nature everything is really coming to life and we had a lot of rain as well yesterday and also this morning we had lots of rain Mr Steve was jumping for joy he was he's got very excited by the fact we've had a lot of rain because now he thinks all of his grass seed that he planted at the weekend he thinks it is going to magically appear however I think it will take a few days before it does come up hello to Emin hello to Lena nice to see you Lena nice to see you nice <laughs> hello Maria I like the music too I have a lot of music as you know I am a big fan of music I love music very much and I'm always very careful when I'm choosing the music that I use in my videos I'm always very careful to choose the right music and I have lots and lots of music, hundreds and hundreds of pieces of music that I use. 
hello i understood partridge wanted you to not stop your daily live streams indeed it is very nice to keep our mind active listening to you mr duncan it is very relaxing thank you adrian i'm glad you like it i'm glad you have enjoyed this i've been with you for around 35 maybe even 40 days every day doing my live streams so i've been here almost virtually every day since all of this craziness began and i'm still here with you today wow the music is so nice thank you very much sunshine i'm glad you enjoyed it nice to see you mr duncan i have a question here as well concerning english what is the difference between believe someone and believe in someone if you believe someone then you trust them you trust them you believe what they say so maybe something that they've told you or maybe something that they, that they have defended themselves with perhaps they've been accused of doing something bad however the person who is defending themselves say they haven't and you you believe them i believe you you believe that person you believe that they are being honest if you believe in someone it means you feel that they are capable of doing things with their lives you are behind them you are there to support them you believe in them you are there with them because you believe in them they are a person who you think has a lot of potential a lot of opportunities ahead of them you believe in them you know whatever it is they are doing you know that they will do a very good job of it because you believe in them i believe in you you have a lot of trust you are very sure that that person can do the things that they want to do you believe in them i like that one hello also caesar hello caesar nice to see you here as well thank you for your lovely messages about my video in the garden this morning and also outside right now so this is actually the view outside with the birds although there aren't many at the moment there were lots and lots of birds this morning but now they've gone and of course as we saw earlier we have my lovely apple blossom as well the garden is looking rather nice at the moment i must say <laughs> even though i say it myself the garden is rather nice for those who don't know who i am maybe you're watching me for the first time i'm mr duncan by the way and i teach english i talk about the english language i also talk about lots of different subjects as well concerning english learning english listening to english and also lots of other subjects as well including the birds we are talking about the birds today i love the birds so much i remember many many years ago i made a video all about feeding the birds and you will be able to see what i'm actually doing in the garden in fact i'm going to show you a little video clip so this is very short only three minutes and you will see i was in my garden way back in 2009 so the video you are about to see was actually recorded a long time ago and the other thing you might notice from the video is the sound quality was not as good as it is now This is the sort of thing I use for feeding the birds. Um, this one is a very large uh, bird feeder. As you can see, it's a long tube with small holes in the side and stands for the birds to perch on when they're feeding. So uh, 
In this one, um, I normally put the mixed seed. So that's, that's this one. So we just pour it in. Pour it in until, until it is full. Wow. Now this feeder holds quite a lot of grain, so I don't have to refill this very often. Normally once a week is sufficient. Okay, that's that. It's ready to be hung back up. As you can see, because this is so long, I have to hang it up very high, like so. Up you go. There. That's it. All nice and full. Come on, birds. It's dinner time. So all we have to do now is put some nuts in here for the squirrels and also for the blue tits and great tits because they also like taking the nuts away whole so uh, as soon as I put these out you can guarantee that some blue tits will come down and start picking them away one by one and in here we will put some sunflower seeds sunflower seeds also for the blue tits and great tits and also the chaffinches as well the chaffinches are very good at uh, getting the seed out of the husk of the sunflower seed yeah the chaffinch is very good at cracking them open very fast and taking the seed out. I don't know how they do it, but they do it very well. Okay, that's it, all done. I hope you enjoyed that a nice little sequence that I filmed a long time ago a very long time ago 11 years ago that was in my previous house before I moved here oh I'm enjoying this nature today would you like to see another little shot of some nature here is something else that I filmed about 12 years ago and it it is well take a look for yourself you can see lots of birds and these are young starlings and these particular starlings are in my back garden where I used to live there were many starlings and you can see lots of baby starlings here young starlings and one or two of them are going to take a bath <laughs> I have a feeling this might be the first time that they, they've ever seen water so maybe this is the first time that these young starlings have ever seen water in their lives <laughs> isn't that just great if there is one thing birds enjoy more than food it is water you might say that birds are crazy crazy about water and also you you should be able to hear the sounds as well of the birds so those are the actual sounds in my garden the place I used to live <laughs> and there is the pigeon there is always a pigeon 
nearby always so these are young fledglings they have recently left their nest and they are learning how to how to drink and also how to bathe as well <laughs> they don't seem very sure of the water something a little unusual today we are looking at nature and this is some video footage a video clip that I recorded many years ago one of the things I miss after moving here to much Wenlock is the starlings I really miss the starlings so much so near where I live we don't actually get starlings at all can you believe it we don't get any starlings at all so I do miss these birds they are quite friendly they are very sociable and I always think the young starlings always look very nice they're quite cute <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that another little thing another different thing that I'm showing today just to show you how much I do adore nature for many many years I've been filming the birds <laughs> so for those asking these are starlings starlings they are all baby starlings gathering together for a drink and also for a little bath as well I hope you enjoyed that we are having a lots and lots of nature today I thought yes let's do that let's have a lot of nature today Tamara says something about Mr Steve I think Mr Steve makes an impression so the impression that you get from Mr Steve is that he is a very organized person sometimes yes I think sometimes Steve is a very organized person sometimes too organized <laughs> it is possible to be too organized Adrian asks where did you used to live before you moved to much Wenlock was it far away from where you are now it is not very far away the place I used to live is called Wolverhampton Wolverhampton a large city fortunately I lived on the outside of the city near the countryside so I've always lived near trees and fields all of my life even in my young years our house was very close to a lot of meadowland so there were always places for us to explore and walk there were always places for us to to walk around and of course needless to say there was a lot of nature nearby so maybe from those early days living close to nature perhaps that's the reason why I like looking at the nature now maybe nature has always been a part of my life perhaps hello Oscar Oscar Monlaw hello to you as well nice to see you here it is very beautiful thank you very much it's very kind of you to say the best way to enjoy the nature thank you very much Ricardo yes everyone can enjoy nature but quite often people don't even notice and this is one of the things I consider at the moment a lot of people are actually doing maybe people now are looking out of their windows and because normally their lives are so busy because normally they have so many things to do they don't have time to look around them so I would imagine there are many people who have started or who have discovered some of the nature that actually exists around them and maybe certain types of nature that they didn't know existed before maybe hello Mika again hello Yuns Yunus Yuns hello to you as well also Ricardo again Mr Duncan do you live near the Cotswolds I don't however Mr Steve used to he was raised 
in the Cotswolds. The Cotswolds is a beautiful place, a lovely part of England. I am much further north. You might actually say northwest. So I am actually sort of northwest of England, northwest, very close to Wales, very close to Wales. Hello also to Ete, Ete Guide. Nice to see you here today as well. Thank you very much for everyone joining me today. Thank you, Anna Pika. It is, is it correct to name the saucer as the thing that the birds are bathing in? Well, that particular thing is a container that you normally use for feeding plants. However, I've decided to use them as bird baths instead. <laughs> so normally those things are used as water reservoirs. So you will keep water in them and then you will place your plant or the plant pot. So the thing containing the plant will sit inside the little water reservoir. So that's what really that is for. However, I discovered many years ago that you can use those particular things also as bird baths. So that's what I'm using them for. I wouldn't probably describe them as saucers because they are large. They are very large. So these days I tend to describe these particular things as bird baths. So I normally call these bird baths, even though they're not actually bird baths. They are things that you use for watering your plants. So that's what I use those for now. I have found an another use for them. Hello also to. Oh, hello, Francesca Bovi. It is like being a tourist in the village. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. Pedro Belmont has an announcement. Pedro is here. And apparently Pedro says he has been tested positive for. Wow. Well, I hope you take it easy. Stay safe. That's all I can say. And I hope you feel better soon. The strange thing is about this particular thing is some people are more affected by it than others. So some people have it like a very mild cold. Others suffer much more. So it really does depend. Hello also to Eunice. Hello also Anna Pika, who says, I'm sorry to hear that you have you have. We can't say it, you see, just in case, just in case YouTube gets angry with me. <laughs> it often gets angry with everyone, to be honest, YouTube. However, I will keep a smile on my face and I will try my best not to get kicked off YouTube. Hello, Francesca. Nature is getting back to the spaces that were conquered by human beings. You might have a very good point there especially pollution as well. So the pollution levels in many towns and cities has actually reduced. I wonder what I wonder what Greta Thunberg thinks of that. How dare you? Oh, sorry about that. Well, I, I just wanted to mention your name because no one's mentioned you for a long time. It's OK. Don't get too upset. I just wanted to say Greta Thunberg. What? Do you think about it? How dare you? No, no, I don't mean anything bad by it. I'm just being polite and kind. That's all. So you are right. Yes. It would appear that the animals are reclaiming a lot of the areas where people were. And because many people are staying away from certain areas. That is true. Black Gacha. Hello to Black Gacha. I like your name, by the way. 
hello also nacious nacious matai hello mr duncan hello nacious i like your name as well some very interesting names on today's live chat we are going to take a look at the place in which i live a lot of people ask mr duncan where do you live i live in a place called much wenlock which is in shropshire a very beautiful part of england not very far away from well not very far away from wales to be honest very close to wales also not very far away from the major town of shrewsbury as well so there you can see a picture of me standing in front of the large sign as you approach the town and also you can also see that this particular place has been twinned with a place in france so we have a strong connection here in much wenlock with france the reason why will be explained a little bit later on meanwhile meanwhile we're going to have a look at one of my english lessons and this is something unusual actually this is all about much wenlock and the reason why this particular place is famous would you like to have a look okay The town of Much Wenlock is situated in Shropshire, England, not too far away from the large county town of Shrewsbury. The town was originally called Wenlock, with the Much being added later so as to avoid confusion with the nearby Little Wenlock. The atmosphere here is very laid back and peaceful. The narrow streets and assorted old buildings give this place a charm of its own. You might say that Much Wenlock is more like a village than a town. The origins of the name Much Wenlock are not completely clear. One explanation is that the word is derived from the Welsh word Gwyn, which means white and lock being derived from the welsh word for monastery the much part of the name is thought to have derived from the middle english word for great the origins of much wenlock itself go right back to the 7th century when a monastery was built here in 680 a.d the building housed monks and nuns who had taken on the oath of virtue and divine devotion. The head of the monastery was a woman called Milberg, the daughter of King Meriwal of Mercia. She was the second abbess to run the monastery. It is rumoured that Milberg performed miracles. It was said that on one occasion she made geese that were eating the crops vanish forever. After her death, she was made a saint. In 1040 AD, the monastery was replaced with a college for priests. Later, it became a priory, a house where monks lived, which was controlled by an abbey that in this case was based in France. Just after 1100 AD, Much Wenlock became a place of pilgrimage after the bones of St. Milberg were said to have been found there. Then in 1376, the Priory came under the control of the English. The reign of Henry VIII saw the Priory closed 
with the dissolution of all religious houses, which included monasteries. In 1540, the priory was stripped of all its valuables and the buildings were sold off. Today, very little remains of the Priory. The large church has all but gone. A structure that took over 40 years to build now lies in ruins. Fortunately, parts of the chapel can still be seen and much of the detail of these parts can still be made out. At the time, this church was one of the most magnificent structures in the country. As you walk around, it is easy to spot parts of the original structure. The bases of the stone pillars that supported the roof of the church can still be seen and long stretches of stonework clearly mark the distinctive outline of the church. The overall shape is similar to that of a cathedral. A large crypt can be seen at the site. A crypt can also be called a tomb or a burial chamber. A short while ago, the skeleton of a monk was found in the remains of the crypt. This curious shaped structure is called a lavabo. It was where the monks would bathe. Originally, this structure was inside a large octagonal or eight-sided building. As I have said before, these old buildings are fascinating to look at. They connect us with a long since bygone age. I suppose it is lucky that past dwellers here decided not to tear this place completely to pieces. Their hesitance to destroy is our historical gain. These days the Priory is owned by English Heritage, who have done a great job of preserving this wonderful monument. Visitors to the site can go on a virtual guided tour using headphones with commentary and an insightful guidebook. And there it was. I hope you enjoyed that. One of my many English lessons. And there we were taking a look around the place in which I live. Oh, very fancy. A little bit later on, we are going to have a direct tour around the town in which I live. So that coming a little bit later on. Also some full English as well. One of my full English lessons. But right now we are going to start talking about something, yes, something that I am very fond of. Something that you might think, Mr. Duncan, you seem very crazy about this particular subject. And that is because, well, because I am. Oh, look, I love birds. And here you can see some little house sparrows. And this is a house sparrow, a baby being fed. Have a look in a moment. The adult will come and feed it. It's waiting very patiently to be fed. And there you have it. So this particular baby house martin, house martin, house sparrow, <laughs> is actually being fed in the tree. 
and that is actually in the garden where I used to live. So quite often you would see these things taking place, especially during this time of year. And I have lots and lots of videos that I've filmed over the years of all sorts of nature, including also the bird that I just accidentally mentioned. Oh, I hope my internet connection isn't going again. Oh, dear. Is my internet connection going again? I hope not. I really hope not. <laughs> Here is another bird that often flies around not only where I used to live, but also where I live right now. A little house martin's nest. Have you ever seen a house martin? It is a beautiful bird, a beautiful little bird. And they fly around very high up in the sky and they are very unusual because this particular bird feeds as it flies. So as it flies around, it actually feeds from all of the tiny flies and insects that are flying around the area. And there you can see house martins going into their little nest. And the nest is very unusual because it is made of mud. It takes a very long time for one of these nests to be constructed. It takes a very long time. A lot of people mistake house martins for sparrows and also swallows as well because they move very quickly. So in this particular nest, there are some baby house martins. There are actually some babies inside this nest being fed. You might actually be able to hear the noises. Isn't that lovely? So needless to say, I am quite crazy about birds. Just to prove it, today we are going to spend a short time talking about feeding the birds how to get the birds to come into your garden how to get them interested in your garden there are many ways of doing it of course and quite often you have to put certain types of food outside your house normally in the garden normally situated in a tree if you don't have any trees, you can always have your own artificial tree in the form of a bird feeder. So one of the things that I love giving to the birds is sunflower hearts. They are crazy about these particular seeds. If you want to guarantee that you will get birds coming into your garden, can I just say sunflower hearts is the way to go. If you put some of these in your garden, I can guarantee you will get birds flying into your garden and they will be feeding, especially during the nesting season. They will be busy feeding these to their little chicks, sunflower hearts. So what these actually are, they are actually the inside of the sunflower. So normally a sunflower will have a hard husk on the outside. But you can buy the, the sunflowers without the husks on the outside, which is quite nice, really. So it means that the birds can come very quickly and they can take the sunflower hearts away. And of course, some birds will also take the other husk off as well. Green finches will often remove the second husk. So when we say husk, we mean the hard outside, the hard outside of a seed. What is a house martin? It is a type of bird that will nest under the eaves of a house. And quite often you will see their nests. They are very unusual. They are made of mud. They are also migration birds as well. They do migrate as well. 
hello reza all of the birds from east to west that tune is so dear i love the farmyard birds the best <laughs> thank you reza for that i have a feeling that might be a poem there are many birds near my house in the morning every morning i am woken up by my neighbor's cockerel making its very loud noise i think you know the sound i'm talking about the sound is a little bit like this <laughs> and it wakes me up every morning i don't know why but recently near where i live people have become quite crazy about keeping chickens and also they need a cockerel as well i'm not going to tell you why they need a cockerel but they do so another thing that you can put out for the birds besides sunflower hearts you can also put out peanuts as well peanuts sometimes you can put peanuts outside they are things that many birds like to eat and once again as i mentioned earlier they are full of energy full of lots of energy things that the birds really do need to survive especially during the winter peanuts are very popular for the birds during winter time the birds go crazy over them but of course you can put them out at any time of the year so peanuts another thing that i often put out on my bird feeder in fact if you look now outside <laughs> there it is there is my bird feeder right now so you can see there are sunflower hearts there are also peanuts and you can see a little goldfinch feeding from the sunflower hearts so you can see the bird is actually feeding from the sunflower hearts a very popular type of bird food very popular indeed another thing you can put outside and this is something that i've discovered recently and can i just say the thing i'm about to show you is the thing that the birds go absolutely crazy for this is the thing that the birds really do like eating these are suet nuggets pieces of suet a type of fat and inside you can see there are lots of little things there are seeds and also little pieces of fruit so these are the things that drive the birds absolutely crazy if you have some of these in your garden i can guarantee you will get birds coming <laughs> from everywhere <laughs> definitely <laughs> suet nuggets they are a very popular type of bird food and you can buy them in many places now it is amazing how many shops now actually sell bird food it has become a very big business so those particular things i just showed you they are the things that the birds in my garden absolutely love they go crazy over them crazy over those suet nuggets i will show them again for those who didn't see it properly so there is the word suet suet nuggets so when we say nuggets we mean small pieces of something small pieces so suet nuggets and suet is a type of fat you can also use it in cooking as well so it is not unusual to see suet used in cooking for us so not only do we enjoy suet the birds like it as well because it is full of energy and one of the things that the birds really like it's energy they really do here's another thing that has been around for many years this is also another type of suet these are suet balls they are a little harder they are much tougher 
than the suet nuggets so the suet nuggets are quite soft so these are quite soft they are very soft many different types of birds enjoy these however these are a little harder they are a little tougher but once again they contain lots of seeds lots of lovely little things that the birds like to eat of course if you are going to feed the birds you will also need bird feeders as well things that you are going to put the bird food in so I'm going to show you quickly some of the things you can use for example you can use one of these can you see it so this is a typical bird feeder this is the sort of bird feeder that you will find in many gardens as you wander around and this one is very good for certain types of seed you can have mixed seed to be honest with you I don't like using mixed seed and the reason why I don't like to use mixed seed to feed the birds is that quite often there is a lot of waste so the birds will only pick certain seeds and they will leave the rest so you quite often end up with lots of seeds on the ground which you don't want so that's not good and that's the reason why in here in this particular feeder I normally put my sunflower hearts they go in here so this particular feeder is for my sunflower hearts or other types of small seeds a very useful thing if you are going to feed the birds you must have a bird feeder here's another one this is something you can use if you want to feed peanuts to the birds so this particular one has much larger holes on the side and those large holes allow the birds to peck at the peanuts so that is what they are for you use this particular type of feeder for peanuts and that means that the birds can get their little beaks inside the holes and they can peck at the peanuts does that sound good I think so so there you can see in the garden you can see the peanut feeder the peanut feeder is at the back so that is used for feeding the birds peanuts as the name suggests <laughs> and there you can see oh look did you see that I think there is a green finch yes definitely there is a green finch taking food from the sunflower heart feeder mm, very nice very nice indeed <laughs> what that happened yesterday do you remember yesterday that happened yesterday I don't know why that happened but it keeps doing it <laughs> and it's not my fault trust me it's not my fault <laughs> so the peanut feeder is very good for for putting the well putting the peanuts in to be honest also you can have a very extravagant type of bird feeder as well look at that one so there is something that is really extravagant a very magnificent bird feeder this one is quite expensive but the thing about this is it will not allow squirrels to eat from there so you will notice there there is something that is slightly different from my bird feeders so if a large animal such as a squirrel hangs on there it will actually close it will close so this particular bird feeder is actually squirrel proof it has been designed so squirrels can't eat from it because if the squirrel climbs there the hole will close because of the weight of the squirrel pretty good and a marvelous invention oh we have 
a little baby quickly yes there is a baby and I think it might be being fed at this very moment if you watch carefully you might actually see this bird being fed so at the very bottom that is actually oh yes there we go did you see that <laughs> it is actually being fed by its mother so there is the mother and also the baby greenfinch right on the screen in front of you now so this is happening live it is not recorded this is happening outside my window right now a little bit of nature is taking place <laughs> so that is a baby greenfinch being fed by one of its parents I couldn't resist showing you that I know I get very carried away when I'm talking about the birds I know so that particular bird you can see now is actually a baby greenfinch fresh from the egg <laughs> and that is what we are looking at today we are looking at the birds around the place in which I live have you got a lot of squirrels in your garden unfortunately yes however over the years I've put many things in the garden that will deter the squirrels so when we say deter we mean put off things that put a certain animal off coming in so they will not come into your garden and one of the things is my lovely plastic bowl I can't show it you at the moment because the camera is too close however just below my bird feeder there is a large dome a large bowl that is upside down and it stops the, the squirrels from getting onto my bird feeder yes very nice so yes to answer your question we do have lots of squirrels in our garden and many people find them quite annoying quite annoying indeed so the extravagant bird feeder you don't have to get this one you don't have to get this one in fact I would say if you want to start off feeding the birds in your garden get one of these this is a very simple bird feeder you will probably find them in many shops or many garden centers so if you go to a place that sells plants or gardening equipment you will often find these sorts of things as well here in the UK it has become a huge business a very large business hello to Maroots hi Mr Duncan should I feed the birds during summer my advice is yes the birds are always crazy for food during the summer they will often eat seeds they will often eat things that they can take away very easily and give to their young and of course during the winter they will eat almost anything that during the winter they become very crazy about food especially things that have a lot of energy such as suet so these things these are very popular during winter because these have a lot of energy inside them they contain a lot of energy however what I've discovered is the birds love them at any time of year <laughs> they seem to enjoy eating them all the time no matter when it is whether it's summer autumn winter spring the birds are always eating them hello Noemi hello also to oh hello Anna Rita why don't you like squirrels I like squirrels however they can become a pest in your garden if you get too many if you get too many squirrels coming into your garden at the same time they can become rather annoying so I do like squirrels I have nothing against them I don't hate squirrels but they can be a little 
bit of a pest. They can be slightly annoying. Sujin asks, I wonder what the but I wonder if the birds like you. I think the animals like humans that have fed them. Do the birds have conscience or consciousness? Consciousness. Do birds think? Are they aware of their surroundings? I'm not sure of that, but I do sometimes notice that there are similar characteristics between human beings and birds. Birds sometimes fight over their territory or their space. They will often fight and squabble over food. So things that one bird has, another bird will try to get from them. So you might see a lot of similarities between bird life and human beings quite often. Especially if you watch them for a very long time. I don't have any pets. This is true. However, I do like feeding the birds. You can spend many, many hours watching nature in your garden. But all you have to do is attract nature to your garden. You have to attract the birds or else they won't come. They will stay away. They will go somewhere else. So a great way to attract any wildlife is food. Bird food, different types of bird food that you can use to attract or entice. Oh, I like that word, entice. If you entice the birds, you are tempting them. You are putting something in the garden that they like and then they will come down and feed. Hello to Flower. Hello, Mr. Duncan. How are you? I'm OK. Thank you very much. I'm OK. I'm here today. Will I be here tomorrow? Ooh, Mr. Duncan, we don't know because tomorrow is the, is the first of May. It is May the 1st tomorrow. April is about to come to an end. Hello also to Unicarina Squirrel is a verb that means hide something. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Squirrel can also mean to hide something away. Maybe you are putting some money aside. You are hiding some money away, maybe for later, just in case you need that money later on. You can squirrel something. Yes, it's very interesting that. So the word squirrel describes the, the animal that sometimes is annoying <laughs> and it can also be used as a verb to mean hide something away. You squirrel something. You are right. Yes, I like that. <laughs> it's a question of love. Mr. Duncan loves the birds more than the squirrels. The problem with squirrels is they become a pest because you get too many. So once one squirrel comes into your garden, quite often you will get many more coming as well. So I don't always like to encourage the squirrels. However, I do like to encourage the birds. In France, they will probably lift. Oh, hello, flower. In France, it looks as if they will probably lift the lockdown in small phases on the 11th of May. OK, here in the UK, it is supposed to be ending on the 7th. So next week, apparently next week, we are supposed to be relaxing the lockdown here in the UK. Enough of that. Let's look at something nice. Let's look at something that isn't that. A lot of people ask, Mr. Duncan, where do you live? Can we see more of the place in which you live? Many new viewers who haven't seen the place where I live. Guess what? You are about to be taken on a lovely tour of my hometown. It is the place where I live. It is the place that I call home. Much Wenlock.
many people ask me, Mr. Duncan, where do you live? Well, I thought today it'd be a good chance for you to have a look in the place I live because it's such a beautiful day today. So here it is. Here is the place in which I live. It's Much Wenlock in Shropshire, one of the most beautiful places in England. And if you haven't been here, my question is, why not? Can you see what's over there? That is the local undertaker. They are the people responsible for arranging funerals. They help to dispose of dead people. It's a rather sobering thought that one day those people will be putting me in the ground. If there's one thing I really love about a day like this, it's the gentle, calming breeze. Just a very gentle breeze blowing in the air, helping to keep me nice and cool. The word breeze can be used in many ways. Of course, it is the gentle wind, cooling and refreshing as it blows by. A very gentle breeze just like today really there is a lovely summer breeze in the air keeping me nice and cool also breeze can mean to do something very easily I passed my exam yesterday it was easy in fact it was a breeze something that is very easy to do something that you found easy to do can be described as a breeze to move gently maybe into a room or out of a room or in front of a group of people to suddenly appear can be described as breeze he breezed into the room with complete confidence Now there is a very interesting place, a gate to a secret garden, a place that is unknown and never seen by anyone. Just like the story. Have you ever read that story? It's called The Secret Garden. It's a brilliant story, full of adventure, excitement, mystery, and of course, a little bit of fantasy as well. We all like a little bit of fantasy in our lives from time to time. Do you recognise this place? This is where I did my famous puddle dance. But as you can see, the puddle has now gone. The water has disappeared. It's so hot at the moment. The puddle has completely evaporated. It might sound like a strange thing to say, but due to making these English lessons for you, my life changed completely. And here is what happened. Way back in 2012, I made a special lesson right here in Much Wenlock, talking all about the origins of the modern Olympic Games. And I fell in love with this place. I loved it so much, I ended up moving here. And so did Mr. Steve. The field behind me is where every year the Wenlock Games are held. And this very place was the inspiration for the modern Olympic Games that we all know now.
Here's an interesting phrase that you might hear used quite often in English. The phrase is cross the line. If you cross the line, it means you have gone too far. You have done something that has upset many people or one person. You have crossed the line. Up until a certain point, what you were saying or doing was okay. But you had to go too far. You had to cross the line. You went from being okay to offensive. You went from being acceptable to unacceptable. You crossed the line. I must be honest, it is absolutely baking hot today. I can't believe I've been outside for the past four hours filming in this heat, this intense heat. I think it's fair to say that we will all remember the summer of 2018. And can you see behind me? Look, everywhere is scorched. The sun has dried all the grass, all of the trees, all of the bushes. Everything looks parched and tinder dry. And that is one of the reasons why there are many wildfires breaking out at the moment, including here in the UK and more recently in Greece. If you remember earlier in the year, I showed you this field. I showed you all of the yellow flowers that were blooming in this field. This is rapeseed. So everything you see behind me is rapeseed. And now as the seeds come out, you can see now that we have small seed pods and inside these are the rape seeds. And these will be gathered very soon and then they will be compressed and all of the oil will be extracted. And that is rapeseed oil. But as you can see, once again, the theme is very similar. This whole field is now very dry, very arid and Perhaps, I'm not 100% certain, but perhaps this whole crop has been ruined by the hot weather. Although, if I just have a look inside this pod, yes, you can see all of the rape seeds. Can you see them? There they are. Very tiny black seeds. And that is where the rape seed oil will come from. Can you see what I've got here? A lovely ice cream. The only problem is, it's so hot today, the ice cream is already beginning to melt. However, it is very much appreciated. There is nothing worse than being hot and sticky on a day like this. Right now I'm in the square here in Much Wenlock, in the centre of the town, a very small, cosy area. In the afternoon lots of people like to come and sit down, especially today because the sun is out and some people have decided to come into town to enjoy the sunshine and of course sample the local ice cream. And there it was. There it was. 
a lovely walk around the place in which I live and that by the way was filmed two years ago before all of this so that is the reason why in the video you could see me walking around amongst other people it, that isn't now <laughs> definitely not now <laughs> if I was walking around the town now I imagine that someone would come up to me and tell me to stop doing it because we are still in lockdown here in the UK but it's nice to look at some of those memories some of the sights and some of the sounds from two years ago and I really can't wait until the moment I can wander around and do those lovely things once again what about you what is the first thing that you will do once all of this craziness is over is there something that you have in your mind maybe something that you would like to do when all of this crazy nonsense has come to an end be it this year or next year what is the first thing you will do what is the first thing as soon as they say hi hi everyone hi human beings on the planet guess what you can all go back to normal what is the first thing you will do maybe you'll go go out to a restaurant and have something to eat perhaps you will go shopping in the local market maybe you will just get into your car and drive for many hours until you reach the sea maybe so what is the first thing you are going to do when all of this returns to normal? Some people are saying that perhaps society will have a fresh start. Some people think that maybe we will have a fresh start, a new start after all of this comes to an end. Perhaps people will be kinder or maybe more generous or more thoughtful than they were before this happened who knows so a lot of people seem to think that people might be a little more considerate thoughtful kind once all of this has come to an end thanks for this beautiful tour says Reza you are welcome no problem it is my pleasure Mr Duncan the UK and Ireland on the representation of the flame of the Olympic Games is almost half of the world a little bit of an exaggeration don't you think <laughs> I think what that is referring to is all of the other countries that take part in the Olympic Games so maybe you could say that the Olympic Games is a, is a worldwide event because many countries take part in the Olympic Games and of course as I almost mentioned earlier this is where the Olympic Games started so the modern Olympic Games as we know them now originated right here we were the inspiration for the modern Olympic Games hello also to Marcia very nice and pleasant in the town where you live thank you Marcia that's very kind of you to say Nadia hello Nadia nice to see you today I will hang out with my friends after all of this returns to normal I think one of the most common complaints that people are making about this particular period of time is they can't meet their family and friends I think of all the things that are inconvenient or difficult to cope with I think not being able to be near your family is probably the biggest problem of all or maybe the thing that you want to put right the thing that you want to do after all of this comes to an end and one of the other things of course affecting me is this current situation because I can't go to see my mother my mother at the moment my mother <clears throat> is being taken care of at the moment and unfortunately I can't go to see her however I can call her on the phone so I have been calling my mother and some of the conversations take place 
over a very short time. They are very short conversations because my mother is tired and she doesn't want to speak. And other times we talk for a long time. And yesterday, something I didn't mention yesterday, and I feel very guilty for not mentioning it yesterday, was my mother's birthday yesterday as well. Next year, she will have a special birthday next April, a very special birthday because she will be 80 next year. But unfortunately, at the moment, due to all of this craziness, unfortunately, my mother is out of bounds. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to actually go and visit my mother, which is not nice when you think about it. So I suppose the first thing I'm going to do is go to see my mother, actually physically see my mother. So I'm really looking forward to that. Anna says, I, Im I imagine you have missed her a lot. I think it's very frustrating. One of the most heartbreaking parts of this is the fact that you can't be near people who you want to be near. So I think that is one of the biggest problems. I, I've noticed today that there are some problems with the live stream. I don't know why, but the live stream sometimes isn't working properly. So if it isn't working properly, I apologise, but it is probably because of my internet connection. I have had some problems. There have been some big problems recently with my internet connection. I don't know why, but there have been some, some big problems and it's happening right now as I'm talking to you. So I hope you can see me all right and hear me all right because <laughs> everything is flashing in front of me. It is telling me that my, my live stream is not working properly and I don't like it, to be honest. So even my internet isn't working properly during this time. I can't even get my internet connection to work during this period of time, unfortunately. So it's rather annoying, to say the least. Mr Duncan, it was actually, oh yes, it was actually Baron de Courbetin who started the modern Olympic Games. Yes, you are right. I'm not denying that. However, his inspiration came from observing the Wenlock Games. So his inspiration came from seeing the Olympic Games or the Wenlock Games, as they are known, taking place. It looks as if my internet connection is being really annoying today. I don't know why, but my internet connection is really bad today. It keeps cutting off and I don't know why. <laughs> I would love to find out why it isn't working properly. I really would very much. I've just checked my internet connection just to make sure it is working. So it is working all right here. So I'm not sure what it could be. Maybe, maybe it is a problem with YouTube, perhaps. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you can still see me and hear me. I will be going in a moment, basically because, <laughs> basically because it looks as if this isn't working properly. <laughs> How annoying is that? I'm really sorry about that. And this is one of the reasons why I sometimes use my mobile phone to stream with, because quite often it doesn't work very well if I use my internet connection, which is rather annoying to say the least. So I'm very sorry about that. If you can't see me very well, there is a slight problem with the internet connection. Happy birthday to your mother. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, it was my mum's birthday yesterday. She's doing well. She's OK. She's a little unhappy with the situation. As you can imagine, she is not happy with what is happening at the moment. 
I'm horrified to see that my live stream keeps disappearing <laughs> dear anyway I'm going to cut you loose I'm going to say goodbye because it looks as if we have a very big problem with the internet connection and because of that I'm going to cut this live stream short I don't know why it is happening but it isn't my fault because my internet connection is perfectly all right so I can only imagine that it is something to do with YouTube oh I can see you and I can hear you well teacher oh okay then that's good I'm pleased to hear that you can see and hear me I really am <laughs> because when you're here you see I, I can't really know properly if you can see me or not or if you can hear me so it's a very strange situation when you are doing a live stream because you're not sure if people can actually see you and hear you out there so for all I know I might be standing here talking to myself who knows thank you oh it's okay now thank goodness for that even though I still have lots of red lights in front of me and those red lights tell me that my internet connection is rubbish <laughs> even though it isn't thank you very much Felician Mr Duncan your city is really beautiful it is actually a town where I live it is actually a town thank you very much for oh I really wish I can take a trip with my family as I am really stressed out because of the idea of working from home a lot of people are really fed up of this situation many people can't wait for this to end they really can't oh it looks as if my internet connection or my connection on YouTube has come back isn't that nice how lovely welcome back everyone <laughs> hello Noemi hello also the knowledge center hello the knowledge center I am very intrigued by your name what sort of knowledge do you specialize in is there a certain type of knowledge that you talk about or maybe something that you deal with perhaps so my mother is okay she is not happy about the situation and I really look forward to seeing her again very soon Oh, I see. We've got that, have we? We've got that going on. Okay. Bye bye, the Knowledge Center. Bye bye. There we go. They've gone now. Sometimes I think that a person is coming on here and they're going to be nice, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're just a little bit stupid. The connection has gone, says Anna. Has it really? Well, if it has gone, I am in a lot of trouble am I just standing here talking to myself now I don't know <laughs> shall I just stand here and smile am I still here am I still on no yes will I be back tomorrow I'm not sure yet we will have to wait and see I have to find out first of all if my internet connection is going to work because at the moment it doesn't look as if it's doing very well I think this is YouTube to be honest I actually think that YouTube is causing this problem I really do feel as if it is thank you Valentina oh the hairdresser Valentina says I am going to go straight to the hairdresser as soon as this finishes <laughs> I'm going to go to the hairdresser that is a good idea I like that one very much yes not that I have to worry about that I don't have to worry about my hair because I don't have much hair but I would imagine the ladies the ladies are really wishing that this will be all over so they can go to the hairdressers and have their hair done I think so I'm going to go now because I really don't know if I'm going out live it or not it's very strange <laughs> what 
what a strange situation to find myself in okay I'm going to go I will see you when I see you maybe tomorrow or maybe on Sunday we will see what happens I'm going now because this whole live stream is not working very well and it's starting to annoy me to be honest and not many things annoy me but one of the things that does annoy me is when my live stream is not working properly so that's what's happening now so I am going I hope you've enjoyed what you can see of this live stream I don't know what will happen after I finish this but I will hope to see you later and I hope that we, we will all be together again here on YouTube very, very soon. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. I hope you're OK. Stay healthy and happy. Sorry about the bad connection. It's not my fault. I think it's YouTube's fault. Naughty YouTube. And of course. Until tomorrow or maybe Sunday or maybe never if my internet connection never comes back. This is Mr. Duncan saying thanks for watching. See you later. And of course, until the next time we meet here on YouTube, hopefully. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. Can you see Mr. Woodpecker? Hello, Mr. Woodpecker. We can see you. We're watching you. You are feeding in my garden. We can see you. So there you can see a little woodpecker in the garden at the moment. He's feeding from my bird feeder. So now we can have a very close look at this magnificent bird. This is a great spotted woodpecker. And right now it is feeding from my suet nuggets. As I said, if you put lots of food out for your birds, they will come.
They really will. For those wondering what is going on, you are watching a live feed from my garden. And there is a lovely great spotted woodpecker having something to eat. And this is a live shot outside my window right now. And the woodpecker seems very hungry. <laughs> so this is a male woodpecker, a male great spotted woodpecker. I was going to end my stream, but then suddenly I noticed this lovely bird was in my garden. So I have decided to extend this live stream for a little bit longer just so we can watch this beautiful bird. <laughs> 